I'm hot sighing, ladies and gentlemen, and botching is because I don't know what to make of this show. Or what teenage direction is. Because when you look at the show, it was not bad television. It wasn't. But was it building for the pay-per-view? To a point, yes. Some of this was built decently well towards the pay-per-view, but I still have this feeling that the pay-per-view is being thrown under the bus. Honestly, I am. I'm hoping they change my mind before the 27th. I mean the 20th, saying the 27th. I'm still botching because I'm not sure about what this show was giving me. We have maybe two weeks. Oh, no. We have only a week left. You see, I'm, I'm botching so much because... I'm still kind of confused about this show. When you see the beginning of the show, when you look at Dixie Carter and what she did with Sting, making a match where Sting or Magnus must pin Kaz and Daniels an ego. If they don't, they don't go to Bound for Glory. Was okay. It wasn't totally bad. But you hearing her taking little jabs at Vince and Stephanie and Eric Bischoff, who's working with her, it's something they don't all ordinarily do in the business. You don't normally stick a poke stick and poke someone like that. I mean, once in a while, yeah. But directly call their names? You don't normally do that. I know AJ did that last year when the when they were doing the AJ segment against AJ Lee. But now um it's not bad. It's compelling and it's showing her to be a bitch. So, I got to say it right. A bitch. Got to be like that. But when you see it, it's not bad to do. But I kind of have this feeling that's not a total focus with, with Dixie. I mean, the way they're structuring this to go into Bound for Glory, you're questioning what's going to happen with Dixie. Will she be able to run this company properly without Sting, without Hogan, without AJ? This is really revolving around Dixie. This entire show kind of revolves around Dixie to a point. Now let's get into Ego versus Mag Magnus and Sting. It wasn't a bad match. It wasn't a match of the night though. But the point was that it made tension between Magnus and Sting. Which it was needed to go into the show. Into Bound for Glory. I do believe they're trying to make Magnus heal again. I'm hoping so much that Magnus wins this match. If they do not let Magnus win this match and get over 100% clean from Sting, I promise you I'm going to vent. Because Sting does not need any more. Magnus needs this. If Sting gets this, I promise you I'm going to get angry. Now I'm going to move on to the next part since Ego was mentioned. It is the... Hmm. I think I'll leave this for last. I'm moving on to something else. ODB versus Jesse Goddard. I can say this about Jesse Goddard. Ever since he came in with Tara. He sucked with Tara. I'm not saying it was all Tara's fault. It wasn't. He sucked. But at least he's been trying to improve himself. I can say that. I'm sure Fool Killer 99 has said it. I'm also sure that Slug Daddy said at least he's tried at least to improve himself. Has he done well? No, he's still very green. But at least there's showing of improvement compared to a Robbie E. Where it was Jay Lethal, who doesn't have a great character, was way more compelling than a Robbie E. Now the match was totally useless. It doesn't matter. And I love seeing some boobies rubbed into a face. But it was about Leda Tapper. Leda Tapper came out and demolished. A ODB. She destroyed her ass. You can see. This is ODB. This is Leda Tapper. If you can see where my hands are, I'll be like this. This is ODB and Leda Tapper. She destroyed her. And this is leading to a point for me personally, seeing that Leda Tapper is not going to be in the match with Bound for Glory. I don't, they're not going to put her in. They're not. We know later in the night that when it came to Tess Mocker and to Velvet Sky, it's Tess Mocker who's going to be in a three-way dance with Kim, with ODB and herself. But where does this lead for Leda Tapper? She could interfere with the match at Bound for Glory. 
But I have this feeling that because there's so few women and people are very annoyed what's going on with the knockouts, they may throw the title at her very early. I'm hoping they don't throw it at her within five to six months. Take a year, please, TNA. Do not throw it at her between three to five to six months. I'm guessing around five months, they're going to throw the title at Leda Tapa. The hope that it will make more compelling television. And it will destroy her. She's not ready yet. She needed to be my wish. 2014 Bound for Glory was the first time we saw Lady Tapa. It's too soon. But they had no choice. They have no women. Fuck. Bring an Angelina Love back, TNA. You stupid asses. Bring back the Angelina Love. Everyone loves her. Bring back the Mickey Jane. Hell. Bring Awesome Kong back and team those women up and make them truly... The Divas of Destruction. Those are the women that should be called Divas of Destruction. A Lady Tapper who's damn green but can learn from an awesome Kong. Those women would not only dominate TNA, they would put them on the fucking map if they had the right character development for Lady Tapper and right storylines for an awesome Kong. That's just my wish. Let's move on to the... Revenge match of AJ Styles versus the remains of Aces and Eights, which is Garrett Bischoff and Nux. Did this really matter about Nux and Garrett? Were they threatened to be kicked out? No. Before this match, we get Nux and Garrett being finally convinced again. Well, not finally convinced. Convinced again like morons. They must fight for the title for the club when Bully Ray wants it for himself. What do we get? AJ kicking their asses and cleaning their clocks. And then Bully Ray shoving those two aside so he can beat the crap out of them with a chain. Was this good work? It leads into Bound for Glory. You have to make Bully look tough. I was hoping that another person from Aces and H would be kicked out, but... They wanted to focus on Bully Ray. I'm not totally happy about that. But it had to be done. So Bully Ray holds the title above. And he looks dominant. Was it great? No. But it was effective. It was necessary for it needed to be done. And the and the segment before that. When AJ was supposed to get a check. Ooh, I wonder how much money she was offering. By Dixie. To just forget about everything. To get as many trailer park. Um, as they call in England. Caravan. Or we got trailers. They could be all his. But what did he do? He tears that bitch up and says I'm not viable. Well, I can tell you one thing. You threw that check into Dixie's face. I know a lot of people would like to throw something else into Dixie's face. Since she's become a heel, she's become a lot more compelling in her dressing and how she looks. That round face can do something very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. I won't need to say it because I know many men who have thought about it would understand it. So, finally, ladies and gentlemen, the thing you want to talk about. Well, one of the things, actually. No, wait, I'm missing something. Oh, sorry. I was about to do the one I wanted to do. Austin Aries versus a Jeff Hardy. Their match was okay. And it was, I believe Austin Aries won it. But the person who was really spotlighted here was Samoa Joe. Because he said, clearly, you know what? You guys are charismatic. He's going like this. You guys are charismatic. You guys know how to talk. But you know what? I know how to do it too. At Bound for Glory, it is going to be an Ultimate X match with Samoa Joe. And Joe is going to kill you. Do I believe that was good? Hell yeah, it was good. But there was one side effect to that. No fucking Kenny King. You're going to have Saban, Manic, Hardy, Austin Aries, and Joe there. But you're still not going to put no fucking Kenny King. That's bullshit. Manic, who has the title, I can understand. He is forced to be in there. And I don't hate Manic. If they only gave him more compelling storylines, he could actually get over. But Kenny King is charismatic. 
Kenny King help all scenarios get that little thing started. I would like to see Kenny King in there. I can understand why they're doing it because really you want to spotlight four very strong people and one guy who's holding the title who's not that strong. You don't want to have two people who are not that strong and everyone else. But I would like to see it. I want to see that. I want to see Ultimate X. And the person that must win that title must be Jeff Hardy. I know people will say, hey, let Saban win it. It'll work with his character development as a heel. Yes, it could. But if you do not give that character something to do, he ain't going to last very long. Let Jeff Hardy win the title. Then the next week, let him come in and let Saban kick his ass. That will give a good feud between Hardy and Saban. That is the perfect reason to have Hardy there, to get Saban over as a heel. So eventually, Saban, when he's pushed back into the main title scene to be a transitional champion again, people would buy him more better because the last time they did. Now finally, one you've been waiting for, Ego Hall of Fame Ceremony. I've been waiting for this shit. I wanted to see what they're going to do. And when we saw Kaz and Daniels, Kaz coming out and oh, some orange. And then Daniels coming out and yellow. They're saying we're making fun of all of y'all here. This is Throwback Thursday. I loved it. I'm never bored with those guys. I loved it. And then when Robert Blue came out in that, as they, I think they called it a zoot suit, back in the 40s and 50s, he came out in a zoot suit, came out and sat down in a, more well, like a Game of Thrones type of seat. They showed him a montage of how great he is and inserted Robert Roode. And seeing Hardy say, there's no one better than Robert Roode in the whole thing. <laughs> I'm, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hell out of that segment until one thing at the end was wrong. One thing at the end that fucked it up for me. And that was Kurt Angle coming back. I was hoping, I said in one review when they started promoting Kurt Angle coming back, I said, please do not make him come back and do matches. It is too soon. I know Hardy came back after three to four months at least, but Hardy isn't a Kurt Angle. A different animal. You can't say a Kurt Angle can recover as easy as a Hardy. Hardy's done a road with redemption. They're not going to do that with a Kurt Angle. That's the reason why Hardy's gotten so well over. Yes, the crowd was cheering for him. Yes, they were happy to see him back. But let's be honest here, ladies and gentlemen. Having Kurt Angle back after maybe two or three months of being away is too soon. Kurt Angle is not a Jeff Hardy. He's not going to do a road of redemption. He's not going to take six to eight months to come back. The crowd is not going to cheer him like a Jeff Hardy is. The guys in the back are not going to say, you fucked up, you stupid motherfucker. We're going to give you one chance to recover. If you don't, we're writing you off. They're not going to do that with a Kurt Angle. And it's not going to be the same. They're just going to act like it never happened. Unless someone's really got the balls to actually say it, it's not going to happen. I'm not confident about this. Yeah, he can probably do a good, good match with Robert Roode at Bound for Glory. But I'm very worried that he's not ready to come back. He looks exactly the same, even though Taz said, oh, he looks ripped. He looks the same as he left. I just don't feel confident about this. I just don't. I'm hoping I'm wrong. You guys tell me below if you really believe I'm right about this. That Kurt Angle should come back next year. He could have came back next year at lockdown. Or the earliest. Could have been Genesis. Extra amount of time he needed. But this is just my feeling. How do I feel about this show? Uh, it did what it needed to do. I'm giving it a B- minus because I just don't feel they're fully committing everything they need to to Bound for Glory. They just, it feels like they're throwing most of it under the bus. So I hope you enjoyed the Zane Zoo. You see how I'm botching this. I just didn't feel comfortable about this show. Subscribe and comment to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. And I'm hoping to get my review of... Actually, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do the next video on... 
Thy Kingdom Come with Triple H. I have not gotten the DVD set from the guy I know. I know I can go online and try and hunt it down, and I know the sites that can do it. I just don't want to do that. I want to actually hold the DVD in my hand, see it, and actually experience it. I'm hoping in the next, maybe, I could wait until I can buy it, and that could probably take almost three weeks from now. But I'll be honest, I don't know when I can get it. And I hope you guys can understand, and have a good day.